Welcome back to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Second and 60. So it's a new week, um, and I'm just starting my second 500 shows. I uh, reached, uh, I guess, uh, 10 days ago, uh, the the goal of 500 shows over the course of uh, almost two years, actually two years of a recording, and, uh, and I'm starting now uh, into my second 500 shows. And I just wanted to share with you some of the really interesting people that uh, I've got coming up uh, this week and, uh, and, and into next week. I got Roman Bobber, who is a MPP. He was in uh, the Conservative Caucus uh, and, uh, and got uh, removed from that caucus because of his opposition to vaccine mandates and, uh, and, uh, and, and that the government was choosing uh, public health issues over the economic issues. And uh, he's a controversial figure. I don't agree with everything he has to say, but uh, I think that he has a right to say it. And so it'll be interesting to listen to him. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Leo Magarlis, uh, who is a lawyer with Robbins Appleby, uh, and he's going to talk about inclusionary zoning, um, a new rule that uh, the city of Toronto and other municipalities in uh, Ontario are looking at. And, and Toronto is probably going to implement it uh, for uh, next year. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, force developers, uh, builders, to... Uh, to include a certain amount of affordable housing in every uh, development. And, and some people, particularly uh, some city councillors, think that uh, that's gonna provide more housing uh, for uh, uh, people that uh, can't afford the current housing. Other people think that, uh, no, the developers are still gonna demand the same return. And uh, this is effectively a tax that makes it less economic uh, for them to build. And so therefore what we'll have is less building. And with less building um, and or frankly, even the same building, but that uh, cost of the inclusionary zoning not taken by the developers, but by taken by the developers to put on the cost of every other unit will make housing less affordable. And so it's one of these issues of, uh, you know, we, we all want more affordable housing, but by the way that the city is enforcing it, um, are we actually making things worse? And it'll be an interesting conversation. And he's got some other solutions, like maybe government should just approve um, developments more quickly or increase height or increase uh, zoning um, uh, um, and or, you know, bring approvals to uh, to approval more quickly um, and, and sell city land for uh, cheaper prices if they really want to have uh, more affordable housing. So it's an interesting uh, issue, an interesting conversation. Then I've got a really fascinating individual, Sarah. Uh, Golotchik, who is the CEO and co-founder of a health technology company by the name of BME.ai. And, uh, and uh, what it is, is an app for uh, um, autism, parents, caregivers, and people with autism. And it tracks um, all of uh, the symptoms, uh, incidents, uh, um, uh, Etc. that one gets with autism, so you can better provide information to the healthcare practitioners and to uh, government agencies that are, uh, that are regulating some of the, um, the access to services, etc. And uh, she thinks that it'll end up uh, providing far better health to uh, people with uh, autism. And then on Friday, I've got a really interesting person, Stephanie Farrell. She's an intuitive eating counselor and a body confidence coach. And it's a fascinating conversation about her own struggles with, um, with eating disorder. Uh, and trauma, and how she overcame all that, and how she thinks a lot of people have those uh, those problems, and that she can uh, do things to help them. Um, and uh, and she also does something called EFT tapping, um, and uh, she's a certified emotional success coach, a certified emotional success coach. Uh, but the, the the really interesting conversation is about uh, intuitive eating counselor, where she uh, where she um, suggests that so many people. Um, eat and or diet as a way of dealing with trauma and showing that they actually have control over something when they don't have a control over other areas of their life. So it's a really quite an interesting uh, conversation. I've also got uh, a show coming up with Ken Chow, Chow um, of, uh, of Summit Garden talking about the impact of, um, of COVID-19 on restaurants and, uh, and how they've dealt with it. And then I've got uh, Sarah Wilbur Collins, who's the new executive director of the Riverwood Conservancy, uh, which some people call the hidden gem of uh, Mississauga. And I think it's a incredible opportunity uh, to take uh, the Riverwood Conservancy, uh, which is the garden in the middle of Mississauga at uh, Burnham Thorpe and uh, Credit View and turn it into not the hidden gem, but uh, the true jewel of, uh, of Mississauga. And so uh, I've got a bunch of interesting shows coming up and I hope you uh, check me out. All of my past shows are available online um, at briancrombie.com where I've got both video casts and podcasts available. My podcasts are also available on um, 
Speakeasy on Audible, on Apple Podcasts, and my videos are available on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Um, uh, on YouTube, it's under the Brian Crombie uh, channel, and you can uh, um, separately subscribe there and, and get uh, my uh, my videos every single time they're uh, they're posted, if that's of any interest to you. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing this show. I uh, try to interview political people and business people early in the week, and then I end up doing more lifestyle and the arts people uh, later on the week. I've done a lot of real estate development people, a lot of uh, uh, health, uh, bioscience, uh, uh, obviously a lot of attention with COVID-19. For me, it's been a real pleasure, uh, particularly during uh, COVID-19 and uh, when we've all, all been stuck at home, uh, for me to be able to, as a social uh, animal, um, reach out to people and get to know what they're all about, how they tick and what makes them uh, passionate about life. And one of the things that's been most interesting to me in this whole process is that a lot of people have taken this time out, this time during COVID-19 when we have spent more time at home to I think a little bit about what what's important to them. Um, I did a show a week ago uh, with uh, someone talking about uh, Lauren Malik, um, a uh, midlife uh, career coach, about uh, the Great Resignation, about how so many people are choosing to leave uh, full-time jobs, particularly the drudgery of the daily commute, because they've enjoyed working from home and they've enjoyed no commute. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting, a lot of other people say they can't wait to get back to the office. They can't wait to interact with people again. They can't wait to have social interaction uh, in, the, in the concourses, in the food courts, in the bars and the restaurants after work um, or at lunch hour, because uh, uh, being at home all the time and not interacting people interacting with people is also a challenge. And, uh, and so I do think that uh, COVID-19 has taught us all a little bit about ourselves. It's taught me about how I love meeting people and, and getting to know what they're all about. And this radio program has been an opportunity for me to do so. It's taught some people that they want to interact with people a lot more often. And so therefore getting back to uh, an office uh, type setting in a downtown location um, is what they really want to do. And I told other people that no, they don't like as uh, my guest today talked about, um, she didn't want to be a corporate strategist. She wanted to be a filmmaker and she went back to school and now she's a full-time filmmaker. Pretty exciting. Um, other people that have written books, other people that have gone to arts, um, other people that have taken a look at their life and the challenges and, and have written about it or started a podcast about it or, or explained it. And, uh, and I think people are really coming to terms with this idea and it's a trite line, but I love it because it really speaks truth. Are we all living to work or are we working to live? And I think that clearly, you know, work should not be for what we really want to achieve in life. It should be to help us live a great life. My, uh, I won't say who, but someone I know um, has been uh, working remotely from New York, Long Island, from Florida, from Turks and Caicos, from, uh, from uh, out West, um, seemingly from around the world. And, being very productive, um, working uh, in the job, but um, at the same time doing it from remote locations and having the time of her life. Sounds pretty good to me. Me, I've uh, done a lot from uh, my solarium here that you can see behind me if uh, you're, you're watching or you might be able to hear. Um, if you're uh, listening to me, uh, I've got 12 windows. I'm in my backyard. Uh, I've got my pool. I've got my hot tub that I get to look at. I got my famous willow tree, the 150 year old willow tree that I get to look at. Um, I've enjoyed uh, working uh, from this location um, and I've enjoyed meeting you and talking to you. So thank you very much for joining me. Anyway, the Brian Crombie Radio Hour, Saga 960, every night, six o'clock on 960 AM on the AM dial. You can stream me online if uh, you can't get uh, our signal at uh, www.saga960am.ca. You can get all my uh, videos on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, it's under the Brian Crombie channel. Um, and um, all my podcasts are available on briancrowley.com as well. Uh, also on Apple Podcasts, Audible Podcasts, and Speakeasy. Hopefully you'll check out some of my shows. I've got a great lineup coming up this week and next. Thanks. Good night, everybody. <laughs>